You're listening to In My Humble Opinion with Maxilia Robinson and Charles Lewis only on 101.3 Jams. I am HO Talk Show, and as promised, we are back like we never left. Still here, still standing, y'all. Sir Charles, Miss Max, Razor, A.A. Ron, Patty, and our special guest right now, um, a new candidate throwing his hat in the ring for Charlottesville City Council, none other than the homeboy, Mr. Carl Brown. How you doing today, sir? Always well, always well. Appreciate you having me. Hey, Carl. Welcome to the show. Appreciate yeah. you, Maxine. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for uh for um for take for taking out your time to uh to come and talk to us today. And um first things first, right, is why, right? Black man from from Charlottesville, born and raised uh here in in town and you know, so you must have saw something that was going on in your native city. But uh like why make the choice to become a city council candidate? I think my situation is a little different. And so in terms of looking at the scope of Charlottesville, I've always seen it from beginning to end. So I've seen all that has transpired over the years without really being in it, because that's not my realm. I wasn't into politics. Um, but actually, how I got into the race, uh, some guys that I've been doing some stuff with um, in terms of working in the community, um, we were sitting down and just kind of looking at the whole scope of Charlottesville at a point. And what I'm suggesting was like, Carl, oh, really? And and so I've never been a political guy. I've always been a behind-the-scenes dude. Mm-hmm who kind of um, did my work behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And so it was kind of presented to me. Um, And so in that conversation, I kind of paused. I mean, because it sounded good. And it came from a lot of different angles. Much like most people, I looked at politics, city council as politics. Um, And then it began to be getting broken down to me in a different kind of way um, Mm -hmm. in terms of influence and what you do and and how the balance of what you do needs to come to the forefront right now because you've mm-hmm. always been a behind the scenes dude. So I kind of paused the conversation and left it in the air and said, I won't say no. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But after that, mm-hmm. I went through my Rolodex and then I just started calling people. Um, because from my standpoint, I, I got a couple of different situations. I do work in other places as well. Mm-hmm. So in terms of opportunities, I was kind of looking at all the opportunities that I could have, whether it was going to be Dallas, New Jersey, whatever it was at that particular time. Um, mm-hmm. And so when this came, this was kind of different for me because I had never gotten it from that standpoint. And I never looked to run for city council. And so I went through my roller decks and called uh, my elders, my friends, my colleagues. I called everybody that uh, that I'm kind of connected to in, mm-hmm. in terms of relationship and just got their various opinions. And and, and and the one thing I told myself, if I get one no hesitation, doubt, I'm not going to do it. Mm, um, just one? Just one. All it took was one. Mm. And so I had no vote in this at all. Mm-hmm. I didn't I didn't say, well, I'm going to do it. Um after I called every single person that I had in mind uh, and waited, some people I didn't get and waited. As soon as I did that, I mean, once I got to, you know, um, that decision, it was no nose. And I was like, OK, this is mm-hmm. more about the people than it is about me. Mm-hmm. And so my running is really it has nothing to do with me. I think it's more about it's bigger than me. It's way bigger than mm-hmm. me. Um, I think it it's be. more about the people. Um, and, and, and their voices in terms of the direction they want to go in. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of followed that. Yeah. And, and, and so here we are. Now, that's a very interesting, though, the whole the whole dichotomy, right, between being, let's say, an activist or a community organizer, you know, like whatever title you want to put on that versus being a quote unquote politician. Right. And so, like, so yeah. why make that choice, though? Because a lot of people feel like that sort of grassroots in mm-hmm. the political game is 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 polar opposite. And, yeah. Well, and the whole you, you're totally right, mm-hmm. because. I've always had, you know, this understanding of politics. And so I've grown around. I mean, I've had um, brothers that I've grown up with who become politicians, and I see what that becomes. And and so one of the things I was conscientious about in, in making my determination is understanding that this is more, though this is part of the process, um, this is going to be more about the work that I'm going to do, and I need to continually do that work um, and, and stay focused and re- maintain that balance of what, mm-hmm. what the real overall objective is in me doing this and so my the p- political aspect of it is just part of the process in order to run I have to I mean that's just part of the process so I went through that process and it was a different process for me because I'm not used to that I mean yeah. selling yourself pro- politics requires you to get out and sell yourself yeah. and, 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 yeah. And, and and get people to know you and things of that nature and so I'm very conscious of that because I've never done that I've always been behind the scenes and let's do the work let's get it done doesn't matter let's get it done and people mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. in the realm I work in I don't take credit for people's work because the work I, the work they put in is their own success. So I can't say, oh, well, that's mm-hmm. my guy. No, they put the work in. I just kind of assisted. And I've always been like that. And so this was a little difficult and made my process a little 
um, slower because I want to be uh, still conscientious of me and what I was trying to do and don't jump into the political realm of throwing out websites and say, oh, give me your money. Mm-hmm. Also still being coronavirus, you know, and yeah. keeping that in conscience and people's funds being, you know, where we are right now. We still have all of these other things. So I didn't want to kind of mix the two and say, okay, I'm a full bone politician. I want your money. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be knocking on your doors. I was a little more keep doing the work that you're doing. And, and mm-hmm. over time, when the time comes, you can go out and do that and be um, very calculating mm-hmm. in how you do it. And so, mm-hmm. Bro, if I may, if I may jump in here, I have a quick question for you. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, and I think this type of question, um, um, is, is talked about throughout the city of Charlottesville. Um, a a lot of people have, um, a lot of people question an individual's, um, ability to be, to, to run a city or to, to be in local government, to be a city council member, um, without any prior experience per se, without, you know, any foundation of what it takes um, to do that efficiently, right? Right. And so I hear you talking about being being from Charlottesville, so you've certainly experienced Charlottesville um, coming out of the Black community, so you're familiar with the needs of the Black community. But what I'm trying to figure out is how experience Charlottesville, experiencing Charlottesville has made you uniquely equipped to be a city council member and make decisions, um, vote on resolutions, ordinances, what have you, um, that, that are for the entire city. How do you feel like you're uniquely equipped to be a local government leader? You know, that is a, that is a great question, and I've thought about that a lot. I, in a nutshell, I was prepped for this. And, and so from birth, um, I was mm-hmm. always in the know when it came to those individuals who were making moves in our community, whether they were city council, community leaders. Um, so, like, starting with my grandfather, and I have to always go back to that because I watched him during a period, you know, me coming up in the 70s, and he had already been here since the 40s just hearing his plight and his story and being able to. And so I was kind of the little grandson. My grandfather had a church. So I was a grandson that mm-hmm. would run in the church and ear hustle the conversations he was having mm-hmm. with other leaders in the community. <laughs> uh, and I was that dude. And my grandma, we always say, get out there, boy. And, you know, and so I was that dude. But I, I was intrigued by how those individuals collectively got together and discussed. That kind of right. intrigued me when I was young. Mm-hmm. Um, we and, so, too. And, and yeah, yeah, and so, well, the, the whole point of elders, I am of the old school. And so a lot of what I am right now is because of those who came before me and them taking the time to kind of prep me over the years. So starting with my grandfather when I was younger, I watched his initiative to provide um, affordable housing at a time when that wasn't happening. So we have two, there are two experiences going on. So we hear about the Vinegar Hill um, experience from a lot of people. My grandfather was up on the other side of town and while that whole uh, transition was going on, he had already taken um, and had a vision to create um, to the best of his ability, homes that people could rent that would not, that would be affordable, um, mm-hmm. that would kind of take some of the brunt off the city. So the community I grew up in, grew up in on 12th Street off of Grady and Rossa, which my mm-hmm. grandfather was recently honorary, got an honorary um, sign for. Nice. He pretty much built that whole neighborhood and mm-hmm. kind of sold homes to um, people like Drury Brown and and mm-hmm. people of that nature and kind of created this model. And so when I grew up a lot, I knew my, my family had property, right. but up the street, as we went up the street, those other individuals in my community, he kind of built that community because he built those houses mm-hmm. and those people rent it from him and then others start to do the same thing. And so I saw that as just being, um, just man, that, incredible in my eyesight now that I look at it. But back then, I was just a little dude that wanted to help him out when he was bringing bricks back from the University of Virginia that he had kind of negotiated. Do you mind if I use these bricks? I'm going to build it. And that's how he did it. He basically went to um, sites around UVA when UVA was being built and used the leftover parts and started building homes. And and and, and, mm. and even at that time, he even got a contract out of there where he built the which was no longer there now, but the Econo Lodge that used to be on Emma Street. That was his first project. And the funny part about that, he built that project and black people couldn't even go in there. Mm. 
Mm, and yeah. so in that time for him, that was success. And so I watched him and then by him selling homes to like Jewelry Brown, I got a whole nother scope because Jewelry Brown was an active Democrat, though I didn't know at that time. Um, so I got, a off, I got a chance to walk out of my house and kind of meet with him. Early on in my years, I was his mm -hmm. dentist and menace because I kind of, he had a nice old Buick, yellow Buick like Sabre. <laughs> I broke his mirror on it. I kind of uh -oh. did some, I, yeah, I, I mean, but we were kids, you know. <laughs> but as I got older and, and I kind of transitioned into that young manhood, it became more of a conversation and, and, and vision and why I do what I do. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was one of the first individuals in his MACA work. Mm -hmm. He used to have a MACA summer youth program. Mm -hmm. um, that he created when, we, when when the city was talking about you know getting employment for youth and skills he created that and and I just knowing him had the opportunity to be a part of that um, and so that just goes on to Deberry you okay. know teaching me manhood and so I've yeah. mm -hmm. all these backs Deberry W T Lewis who was mm -hmm. in administration who kind of Turn, uh, hit, turn me on to how to navigate the administrative aspects of school, right. how to administrate the aspects of how to present to a city council, how to present yeah. to a school board, how do I get my program. Mm -hmm. So he was the one that kind of guided me when I presented my first program to um, the city schools, what I, which I had, which is still was the Be okay. Real program. Um, right. And so step in anytime. Right. Well, thank you. Hey, so no, yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. You got another question, Max? Because I had a question. Or oh, you want, want me to go? No, no, go ahead. go ahead. Okay, so <laughs> what exactly are you looking to accomplish mm -hmm. in this role? And here's the reason why I ask you this, because um, I'm going to go a little bit in my humble opinion on some politics a little bit. Mm -hmm, but uh, mm -hmm. in our particular community, it's not. This is not you, but typically politicians love talking to black people we're the easiest people to pander to mm -hmm. but we don't have any requirement once people get into office mm. or once people get into a position mm. so i'm asking you because it sounds like you've done you've had a lot of background you've had a lot of time to meditate over some of this stuff mm. are there some tangible things that you're looking to add to the people in the community because there those are things that that we're kind of going to be looking for okay so i'm already in the community and and and, and in your position, though, right? In, in my position, I'm already. And let's simplify this, right? Right. Most politicians, or most people, and we'll just talk general talk. Most people say, if I am elected, right. I will do X, Y, Z. Here's the difference about me, and I'm gonna simplify this. Mm -hmm. I'm already doing all the aspects of what the city is asking mm. for. So when we're talking about housing, I've already been to the table prior to me even thinking about getting elected or even running for for office, I've already been to the table, made suggestions, those suggestions go forward, and that process has taken on a whole new face. One of the things I said was we needed to bring more people to the table. Now, mm -hmm. unfortunately, with in lieu of all the other conversations, the one thing we missed was that the Charlottesville Almar Realtors Association, which we need to have in because they mm -hmm. have all the listings of the properties mm -hmm. in this town. One of the things they announced on the day that um, the email or text message took hold, and we don't have to go into that, mm -hmm. was the fact that we are ready to work now. We want to talk with the city. We want to, we're looking to do some different things to partner with the city. That was the number one thing that, you know, I thought need to happen. You need to bring those other individuals in to see mm -hmm. who can help you. And so that's number one. Mm -hmm. go, go ahead and finish with in, 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 in terms of the reentry population, uh, my work with the Fountain Fund, um, my work in the community as we speak, my work with the Commonwealth's attorneys, with the judges, and the very essence of those individuals who need the services, I've already been doing that. That's what I do now. And I currently mm -hmm. do that now, and I mm -hmm. haven't lost sight. Again, we talk about balance. In this political realm, I have not lost sight of those individuals I work with because those are the very individuals that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Right. And so if I work with them and then cut them off and then go into the political realm, I'm no better than no other politician. So I maintain right, right, that right. level of balance of what my responsibility is to them and have open conversations about what they think I need to do, mm. what they think I should do. And you, like to see. and you understand why I asked you that I question. I totally get it. I totally because get it. the result, because my <laughs> but, thing is that if there were people that thought the same way that you did, right. the results, because all we, right. all I'm basing this on is results. The results that we're getting 
as a community would be entirely different mm, if right. people thought the same way. Right. Because right. sometimes, because when you get in there, yeah. I don't know about you, the boogeyman happened, and all of a sudden, <laughs> it goes from the community over to me. Yeah. And well, that's a major, well, major issue. Well, politics mm-hmm. is all about the person and not the people. And I knew that. You might want to repeat that again. Politics has has been and will always be until this term. And so I'm not, I don't even put the politicians on me. I'm an individual who running for city council, who Mm -hmm. looked at the scope of what it is, looked at the dynamics of what I fit. And for the sake of the people who asked me to do this, I did not do this on my own. For the sake of the people, Mm -hmm. I said, Mm -hmm. I will represent us like I always have Mm -hmm. in this realm to get us back on track, to get us moving on all levels, and just to look at us to look at some things from some different aspects. I don't come in saying, well, I'm the best or mm. I'm better. I am humble enough to know that I'm better than nobody. Mm. But I'm smart enough to know that I'm different than everybody. And I'm cool with that. Yeah. So, Carl, so something that I hear you saying a lot, that you, you come from a great business perspective. I hear you talk about the history, and it stood out to me when you said on how you had family members that were, that were on a different side of town, you know, during, during, the, uh, during the Vinegar Hill uh, reconstruction or what have you. So, with that, Let's not forget about UVA, right? And UVA's Correct. presence and how you have the city and its um, you know, communal elements and you have sort of like the big, you know, like like 30,000 foot monster of UVA. How do we move that forward? Because while we talk about our history and, and what policies need to move us forward as a community, you so in a lot of ways you have UVA there s- somewhat a weight. And we can't really make moves in the city without maneuvering around that or figuring out how to restructure what UVA has done to the city. So how do you see that relationship playing out? Well, just as an individual, I probably have more relationship with UVA as an individual person from top to bottom than the city as a whole. And I've often often questioned that. Why? What is the disconnect in what the city is trying to accomplish, what UVA is trying to accomplish? So what is that disconnect? In, in terms of athletics at UVA, I have great relationships always have with the coaches, the staff. When, when it comes to administration, I've always had great relations. When it comes to individuals, my godson um, goes to UVA right now. Mm-hmm. And, and so um, there's a different relationship, but I think the biggest issue with, you, uh, with Charlottesville right now, mm-hmm. we have gotten to the point where um, we've kind of been, the, being selective has caught up with us. Charlottesville has been selective for a long time. Mm-hmm. I'm not new to this game. If we go back and look at, I was a distinguished dozen in 1998, you know, mm-hmm. so I see how they, <laughs> they pumped that, you mm-hmm. know. Um, one of the things Charlottesville as a whole has always had, and it's the truth, Charlottesville, uh, the Charlottesville government, Charlottesville, yeah, the Charlottesville government has never taken blacks from the community seriously. Mm. Um, and and if you just look in the history of time, there have been some magnificent individuals that come from here that go and do other great things in other places. Mm-hmm. And then you wonder, well, why couldn't they do that in Charlottesville? What was the, and you know, so that sele- that selectivity mm-hmm. is is one of the things I'm kind of really on because I've dealt with it. I've done business in Charlottesville. Um, all of these consultants that they've hired, I, I, and the last time I was brought to me, I said, next time, come with a check because it makes no sense for you to go pay for a consultant to, to give you months of information and then afterwards come to me and say, Carl, do you mind reviewing this? And I'm saying, why am I reviewing this and who am I? If you had the consultant, you should feel good about it and then say, you know what? These recommendations right here, I told you a long time ago. And I so, so, so sometimes it comes off as, I don't know. That's one of the things I'm going to break. Mm. Um, just from the standpoint of, um, for a long time, we we haven't been using our resources in Charlottesville. Like, so we feel like we got to go to Detroit, Chicago. We are not those places. And most people, you know, celebrate, the, oh, yeah, Chicago. This is not Chicago. And so you have to look at the dynamics. And it's good to go look and observe other places. But you have to look at the dynamics of your place, your town, your mm. city. And understand those dynamics. A lot of the stuff that's going on in Chicago not going here. And so. So, sir, I'm new to the community. Um, I'm coming from the D.C. area. Welcome. And so, thank you. Um, you know, politics is definitely not new to me, but politics in Charlottesville is new. And one thing you said is that the concerns of the black community don't get taken seriously. And that is national. Um, that's not new to any of our communities. But what I, I am um, wondering from you is we see uh, politicians sometimes that look like us 
advocate in our communities and say, if you vote for me, you know, this is what's going to happen. And then we get excited and we vote and they get the seat at the table, but then they forget about us because they're afraid to advocate on behalf of black people. Mm -hmm. Um, And you hear some of that being pushed back with um, when we reflect on President Obama, he was afraid to be the black people's president. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I wonder if you are elected, will you have fear um, in advocating specifically for the black community? Number one, I have no fear. I feel God, so I don't have fear. Mm. That's just not something. And anybody who knows me, I don't fear. That's not something that even resonates in my blood. Um, In terms of advocating for the black community, I I have been the advocate for the black community as long as I've been in this community. And and the black community is totally um, understanding of that. And so I haven't gotten one question about what are you going to do this? Everybody is ready to go because, I, like I said, I've been behind the scenes. And, and so a lot of the first that have taken place in my generation, I was a part of in, in so many levels in, in terms of the uptick in our education, the uptick in our athletics, our kids going off to other places and, and representing Charlotte in a different kind of way. And so from a community standpoint, that is probably... Honestly, I haven't even been in the black community because the black community already knows who I am. And so I oftentimes just drift. I'll go to if I'm going to the park, I'll go to the park. It's not like I'm trying to sell myself. I don't have to go in the black community and say, hey, look at me from top to bottom of the black community. And, and that's where, I, again, I'm different. I stand alone. And so I put the work in over 25 years of staying out of the limelight and doing the work. And, and, and so as a probation officer starting there, um, those individuals that I had on probation are now grown now. And so people have to take into consideration that that 18 to 35 population, mm-hmm. I'm familiar with that whole population. And I'm not talking about white, black. I'm talking about the entire population because I am more of a character guy. So I will not mm-hmm. turn down an opportunity to work with somebody who is different from me because I want to learn them and I want to teach them. And so my programs that I've done are not uh, race, a none of that. Basically, I deal with individuals and help individuals be better individuals. Man, thank you for that call. Um, hey, so, Carl, we're up against the hour. We're going to take a quick break, and then we'll come right back with you with, with some closing comments, all right? All right, sounds good. Y'all stay tuned. We'll be right back next hour. I am HO, y'all, with City Council-elect Mr. Carl Brown. I am HO Talk Show, and we here uh second hour still got uh brother Carl Brown here city council elect for the city of uh Charlottesville um and we just wanted to bring him back you know to to give him opportunity to you know to make his his closing uh statement uh last words thanks for joining us call for sure man I appreciate um, you having me. um you know I appreciate the straight direct answers um and I'm sure the people do too cuz that's that's just how we do it on IMHO and uh, so I'm going to kick it over uh, to to you Miss Max All right yeah, uh, so Carl, I had the, the pleasure of watching one of your previous interviews, um, and you referred to your run uh, for city council as being your time, right? Um, and then you just talked about you having the ability to um, kind of I- identify what a goal is, have people rally around that, and then point them in the direction to go, right? Correct. So it, ca- it really left me wondering how fellow council member might interpret someone coming in thinking I'm coming to tell you what to do mm. how to get there this is the right way you know you know and 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 potentially someone saying I don't need a coach um now for an individual who understands your coaching background that your analogy you know it makes sense but mm. how do you kind of plan to create that synergy on council where you guys can sit at the same table, have opposing opinions, be able to work together, respect one another, and ultimately head in the right direction that's for the for the best of Charlottesville? Mm. That's a great question. Mm-hmm. But honestly, <laughs> my advantage is I've already, re- I, I, prior to me even having to know, so I'm not going to go on the council and not know anybody. Mm-hmm. So I've, uh, I've already reached out and had conversations with, um, the various individuals on the council right now, not in a sense of um, policy and what they were doing, but as individuals. And and so just in that conversation uh, and breaking that ice, I don't come as that kind of person. I'm an approachable person, and but I'm also a, a people's person. And so just having those conversations prior to 
and being able to just establish a base that how I present myself and how I approach it, um, I think will already give an individual a understanding that I don't come like that. Now, I could be stern and all that without even to come on off like that, but the work, I'm not going to give somebody something that I'm not going to do. Mm. And, and so... I'm just coming in saying, listen, this is the work we need to do, and this is what I will do. And so mm -hmm. I will always put up what I'm going to do first. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not going to dictate to mm -hmm. anybody what they should do. This is what I'm going to do. This is what we need to be doing. And I mm -hmm. will make these links. And when that time comes and they're at the table, then everybody else needs to do what they do. I'm kind of, I, mm -hmm. I totally understand that in, in terms of the relationships and the connectivity um, on the council. Uh, I think I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think if it, it if it were um, something that they could do, they would have already done it. But mm. I think the re the respectability mm -hmm. and relationships and connectivity of those other entities, UVA, the just the community as a whole, I think that's mm -hmm. kind of a bridge or a gap for them because I don't think that's their personality. I don't think they're the type of people that are pro that can. Mm -hmm kind of take on that task and say I need to make a link with UVA who what is my starting point let's find out mm. who the president's secretary is let's link with her and see if I can get a meeting mm. let's talk to the housing and find out things have already done um, and so I think that gives them an advantage because they don't feel like they have to do that and so at this point mm. we want to connect okay. we want to connect we want to get to the table where we can start discussing this and if that means mm. I have to do it then mm. I'll do it and I'll come mm. in and I come in day one ready to go Mm. I don't come in. Mm -hmm. uh, oh well, we no. Everybody knows what I do and what, I, and I'm making it clear what I bring to the table. And mm. and and so, right. but I also understand the expertise of the other individuals on the board and can support them and what they're trying to achieve without making it a big old hassle and saying, "Well, that's you. I, I don't no. This is what we need to do. Mm -hmm. Let me link mm -hmm. you with that right there, sort of make your transition a little easier and kind of break the ice and saying, "I know mm -hmm. him." This mm -hmm. is what we're trying to accomplish. We have a common goal. And I think, yeah. you know, that's probably my best, my, one of my greatest assets is just being able to yeah. find common ground with mm -hmm. people who are different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Yeah, just two up. final questions and then, and then I promise I'll let you go. Um, I want to know how you handle setbacks. Because if we talk about your platform alone, brother, you got some setbacks, you know, some delays coming, you know, and we see that mm -hmm. from just, the, the the current mayor's um, priorities right now. You know, you're going to be challenged. Nobody's going to pave the path on some of the things that you're trying to mm. accomplish. So, I think it's worth the the Charlottesville community to know how you, how you will handle those type of things. And then the last question is: There's two seats available, other than your seats on council available, mm. other than yourself filling one of them. What other candidate mm. would you do you feel would would <laughs> would be good for the city council for Charleston? Without even all right, let me answer the first question. Um, mm -hmm. Different with different type of thinking, and so my be real, and we'll get into that a little later. Different type of thinking because I'm very incisive in how I think. Um, so. Mm -hmm. And I teach everybody that I work with, there are no such things as setbacks. We learn. Mm. So there are not losses. And too often do we look at mm -hmm. um, disappointment becomes a condition in the black community because we have a setback and then we mm. think that's the end. That's just one part of the process. Mm. And so setbacks mm. are learning. What are we going to do differently going forward mm. that we didn't do before? Mm. And so I don't even think in terms of can't, don't lose loss setbacks i think in order we win and we learn that's it there are no losses in any of this mm -hmm. and 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 just mm -hmm. all the individuals i work with they will tell you the same thing we don't lose we we learn and so mm -hmm. you know you put that in their mind and you allow people to motivate themselves to go forward um in terms of mm -hmm. who i think um would fit the bill for the other council seat. Juan Diego Wade would be a great mm -hmm. addition because of his governmental background. Um, I think it's a good balance to have someone who has that kind of um, experience, but who is also open to listen. And, and, and so in terms of um, the combination of the two, not discrediting anyone, I don't really know uh, 
the other candidate and the Democrat to the point of working relationship, mm-hmm. um, which is kind of odd to me because I've been in Charlottesville for 53 years and I thought about it myself. No disrespect, but I don't know how you last in this town 20 years and you don't know me. <laughs> and so, and that's a true story. I mean, if you worked in all these uh, these realms, then you should know me. You should have ran across me at some point mm-hmm. in time, and that hasn't happened. So. Um, we shouldn't be really just getting to know each other in this realm right now. Um, but Juan is a, uh, a, a respectful dude. Um, I've worked with Juan in the past in terms of when he worked, when he runs the job center. And so a lot of my work requires me to help individuals get jobs. So I'm always looking at the resources who have them. And so we've crossed paths um, several times in terms of his professional work, his community work. Um, so we have a lot of the same we're in a lot of the same places in terms of what we do, nonprofit, profit. Um, and so I don't really have a lot of direct work, but I am familiar with him in, in terms of his work. And I think that the combination of the two will be a good combination because you'll have it on, you'll have it at the top, you'll have experience at the top, and then you'll have somebody who can relate to the people that you need to relate to to get the message across in a different kind of language that'll understand what the objective is as a whole. So, Carl, if, if I may, you ready? Thank you. I'm ready. I'm always ready. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that I think is missing from council is people's ability to not only come up with ideas and policies that will help, but actually come up with a system for everybody to work inside of. You created a system called Be Real, which means believe, evolve, respect, effort, attitude, and listen, right? Right. The Be Real process I have actually used for my own self and it has bettered me as a person and as a man Mm. when it comes to the council or the people on council do you believe that the be real process can not only help council but help council construct um, systems that will help the city of Charlottesville Mm. okay let me answer the first question first of all be real goes beyond the council because be real is about the individual. So it's, it's all about, it's check yourself and mm-hmm. it's work on you. So each individual in this community need to figure out, like, so if I took the be real acronym and put it in text of every single person in this city, no one is excluded. And that's the thing about be real. There's no color, there's no race, there's no nothing. It's about the individual. And so when I give the card out, it's no longer like I'm promoting be real. That's yours. Mm-hmm. You get to create your own vision of what be real is. But let's just simplify. Mm. Let's just put Charlottesville. Be real Charlottesville. Let's think about it this way. First of all, Charlottesville, the individuals in their homes, each of them, not the council, that's five people. We're talking about 50,000 people. Right. What they first need to do is believe if they can even change Charlottesville. Do they want to change Charlottesville? That's the mm-hmm. first thing. Do they believe it? Mm-hmm. Do they believe Charlottesville can actually change? Mm-hmm. Each individual has a responsibility because each individual has a single vote. So as an individual, do you believe Charlottesville can change? Do you believe in that? And if you do, are you willing to evolve with the changes that are coming? Now, those are evolution is a gradual change. The world is turning on its axis right now, but we can't feel it, but it's happening. It's the same thing with what we're trying to do in this community. It's not going to go from, okay, we got a new council and everything's going to change. We have some stuff to do because there's work already on the table, mm-hmm. but we need to be allowed to do that, the evolving part of Be Real. If we can mm-hmm. evolve, then where's the respect? We need to look at people for people and what they do and stop looking at, oh, you said this or you said that, and we get, listen, respect people for people. Stop looking at people or hear politician or he said that people are people and people are dealing with a lot of stuff right now. And so sometimes it comes off your just how you respond to a person you pass by could impact them people in a, in a certain kind of way. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and so when we talk about respect, I've looked at individuals in places, titles, whatever in the community, walk on a downtown mall and walk right past me like, you know, say nothing mm-hmm. now. People voted you in, and I'll say it. I don't say anything mm. until I get to the table. Now is a whole different game. Mm. And this goes That's for right. officers. This go. I've dealt with it in different lights. Now I'm mm. the same person every day, I, everywhere I go. Now what about I, the effort? You know, we don't get to the effort mm. because that's the effort. If you believe and you're willing to evolve, and you're showing us respect, you have to double your effort. You have to double your output. You can't just go off of, oh, well, I'm going to. You have to be better doubly. How about I walk past this person? Now I'm going to speak to this person. Mm-hmm. That's doubling your effort. I'm walking past you. I never do it. Hey, how you doing today? Boom. Yeah. That's effort. Mm-hmm. I'm not telling you to go out and make him your friend and go give him your bank account. Mm-hmm. All I'm saying, 
Show is a little more friendly. We have a disconnect just in how we pass people. And being friendly is your attitude. And, and, and being friendly is your attitude. And if that person doesn't respond to you, don't take that as, oh, they like this. That's just one person. That doesn't say anything about you. That says something about them. Okay. But your effort of going past and saying, I'm just going to be a little more friendlier today. Or I'm going to put a more effort in helping this person today. That's a major part. And your attitude going to dictate that. That's going to see how you go. Because as you start to put this effort in, your mm-hmm. attitude going to say, listen, I see the work I'm doing. Mm-hmm. I can't even deter. I'm, it's not even up to me to even worry about what this person doing. And then the last one is just listen and learn and not reply. Too often does a person say something. I do it all mm-hmm. the time. I'll be an audience is when I do this as a motivational coach and I'll just say what's up and people say nothing and I was like okay let's listen to that I asked you what's up in general if you really listen listen to learn what's up the ceiling the sky <laughs> mm-hmm. but the response and the reply was nothing that's a lot of stuff up and so we need to be a little more uh, conscientious of what's being asked of us how we respond to it mm-hmm. and, and what does that mean listen to learn I mean people will tell you a lot about themselves just off of listening I think too often we want to be the talkers and we don't do a lot of listening mm-hmm. and so listen mm-hmm. to learn and not reply and so yes. that's to be real and you work on it every day the whole goal is to break down what your strengths are within the be real and what are your weaknesses mm-hmm. and work on your weaknesses but maintain yes. your strengths so you do right. that every day and it doesn't require you to do anything. And you All think year. you can apply that and, to the city. And well, I can apply it to the mindset of the individuals in the city. Now, again, be real is a self check. So I can put it out there. Mm. Whether they choose to work it or not yeah. is on them. You but that'll show the that'll <laughs> give them because I'm going to work it. And the people that I'm working, with are going to work it. That'll give you a clear indication of where we're really going. Okay. If you can't take mm-hmm. the time to self check, the card says this is a self check. This is not Carl said. This is self check. So when it says self, that's you. It's mm-hmm. not me because I'm already doing it and I do it every day. Mm-hmm. That's how I got to this point, right? Where I am right now mm-hmm. without even having to say I want to run. Somebody else looked at my body of work and look at how I go about my business and how I carry things and how I respect people and those things. That would all be real. And somebody said, "You, hey, we need you right now. Mm-hmm. Okay. We need you right now. We 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 need you to come and do this right now, mm-hmm. and that's mm-hmm. why I'm doing it. It's for the people. Right. This is not my own doing. Mm-hmm. So, Carl. So, thanks once again, absolutely for joining us, and again being so blunt and real, being real, right? Be right. real. <laughs> Be real. <laughs> um, but now, um, you know. Before we let you go, though, make sure folks know who want to learn maybe more about the campaign, want to know how to support you, right. um, like how can they reach you, and what's your closing comments to them? Okay. First of all, I want everybody to know this. For me, it's not politics. It's about people. And this is about humanity and getting our people going. It, this is deeper than what the policies on the table and city council is talking about because we're still in coronavirus. Um, and, and that's not something that I take lightly because I'm losing people just like everybody mm. else is losing. So, you know, that life experience doesn't, you know, when life hits, that that doesn't exclude anybody. Nobody's immune to that. That's and right. so we need to be very conscientious of that. Um, and, and so that's why I've kind of slowed up uh, in, in terms of how I'm pursuing my campaign, understanding coronavirus and finances and things like that. But I will definitely be um, out in the community, you know, at the closer we get, just touching bases with those individuals and creating events and just trying to bring people together to get them to understand I'm not, what you see is what you get. I'm not, I'm me. When I walk into a business, uh, whether it's the city council or whether it's a jail cell over at Albemarle County Regional Jail. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be me. When I walk in, I'm going to be me. When I walk out, I'm going to be me. But if you want to support me, Mm -hmm. um, you can reach out to me at friendsofcarlbrown at gmail.com. Um, website will be, I'm trying to, and now this is kind of calculate my, I have a grandbaby that's coming any day. So I'm kind of saying, okay, when you come, that's when it's going out, but I may have to go a little earlier. (laughs) Um, but website will be out this week for sure. And um, if you want to mail checks, you can send them to 640 Elizabeth Avenue, Charlottesville, Virginia, 22901. Mm -hmm. And you can address it to friends of Carl Brown. And um, your support will be greatly appreciated. Um, I represent Charlottesville, and I will make Charlottesville proud. All right. Thank you, Mr. Brown. And... uh that's Hope right, this ain't the last you. time of talking to you. Don't forget it's coming you know, close to the election time now. Well, you're more than welcome. <laughs> you know, I don't have access to your radio, so I can't dominate it. So you got to call me and let me know. <laughs> Raise it. I can come hey, back. I knew you was going to throw my name on <laughs> yeah, well, We won't even go there. But yeah, yeah oh, I look forward to coming back and, and, and just sharing, you know, right. having any yeah. discussions. 
I mean, I think they need it. I think, you know, no sugar coating because I don't need right. sugar. That's right. So, you know, I'd like my coffee black. So hey. Yeah. I, I need it straight up. <laughs> That's All right. right. All right. Well, okay. thank you, sir. Thank you. Until next time, best of luck. Thank you.